My name is Marin Simpson and I'm um, Chief Executive of the Health Creation Alliance. And I'm going to quickly give you an overview of, of the project and the report um, that we produced as part of this project. And we were delighted to work with Joe and Anna and colleagues. And we really did find a very rich um, a, a, a rain, a array of, of, of knowledge and uh, intelligence. Um, to to dig into and uh, our report is called digging deeper for a reason uh, because they were very generous with with that um, so the report it's uh, is appendix d in the uh, the, the uh, in the report um, uh, series and uh, it's really a practical guide uh, for frontline um, workers but it's also uh, an information resource for anyone really managers decision makers across the system uh, to understand what works in community development and the importance of understanding that for creating health in communities so there's a lot in here uh, and uh, it's important that you know that you can keep going back to it um, so the reason that we looked at what works in good in good community development is because good community development does lead to active citizenship and better health and well-being and it actually ultimately will save you money um, and uh, that was a key finding in um, in a, a project that was done 12 years ago by the by the young foundation but also um, lots of organizations and, and uh, uh, community development work that's been done since has you know enabled change to happen and here's just one from Teenmouth that um, that uh, actually uh, raised if you like or saved a net social benefit of 3.9 million over a 16 year period so um so you'll notice the words in in the findings from the young foundation here control contact and confidence not in that order contact confidence and control and these are the three c's of health creation and it's what we've built our framework for health creation around the report uh, the purpose of doing this work was twofold one was to draw out from those undertaking this community strengthening roles, what it is that works. But the second was to frame it for the NHS. And that's very much, we, we very much bridge the NHS and outside the NHS as well as an organization. So framing it for the NHS um, was a really important part of this. And I was delighted to work with Bill Graham on this, who is a seasoned community development specialist and also working in a GP super practice. So we developed the findings from this into a story and that is the story of how people believe that change is possible and what happens after that and these are the, the core elements of that people need to be connected people need space people need to employ and enjoy their skills and passions and people need to take control over their lives and environments and it's that control that is will sustain this so the, there does need to be a power shift here to communities taking control. And so they, people need all of this, both as individuals and as a community. And of course, the very first one of that is about connecting people. So when people are isolated, connecting them back into the community. We're digging a little deeper here to find out what this actually means. Uh, and of course, we need to be connected to other people. We all know that now, that this is really key to health. But actually, we need to be connected to ourselves as well and understand our passions and be able to um, you know, to, to sort of be, be, be comfortable with ourselves. Uh, people need space, yes, physical spaces to, to meet and connect, but they also need emotional space to reflect and sometimes, you know, by themselves um, without being crowded by, by the system. But also they need system space to take action. So the system can be sometimes bearing down on people and communities and actually not leaving space for them to do their part. So space is more more diverse than just a physical space and then people need to employ and enjoy their skills and passions uh, this is all about doing the things we love um, uh, and the things like you know the things that came up through the workshops we did were passing on skills to others is a good example of that sharing our wisdom with others is another good example and then when people need to take control this is about self-organizing connecting with each other to be able to take action, to be able to know how to ask for things, uh, learn new skills, um, you know, um, have money to be able to do things. So, so, uh, and this is about making the right things happen to benefit themselves and communities. So this is in essence, a story of how people start to believe that change is possible and then what happens after, after that. Um, and professionals working throughout the system and in community, the VCSE sector, all over the system um, can do things to support this process 
only communities can take control and actually sustain that in the long term. But there's lots of things that people across the system can do. And what we decided to do in this project was to make these really tangible, concrete actions so that they weren't a set of principles which could be brushed aside because like, we know that the NHS loves to know what exactly it needs to do and people working in those roles need to know exactly what they need to do and so we we spelled it out in, in a set, series of, of concrete actions this is not exhaustive there's others as well um, but um, that is is uh, sort of a, a whole list of things I'm not going to read them all out there's, there's a lot there go back to the report and have a look uh, but it does take time we're dealing with people here uh it's not you know they're not it's not this they're not part of your system in one sense you know and and they can't just you know we can't just do this in six months necessarily different people take different amounts of time um who's this aimed at well as i said before uh it's aimed at everyone because we all need to understand that our increase our understanding of what actually works for people and and why um, obviously pac patient facing roles can do some of this people with a case worker but actually uh, roles that are embedded in the community and probably from the local community and that have credibility with the local community perhaps could could do more of this and go go further along this uh, but only communities can actually take control as we said so anyone who wants to be involved in this process and there are roles for everyone needs to develop that credibility with the community otherwise it's it's a difference it's quite nuanced difference between what works and what doesn't work so it's nuanced we need to dig deep to understand it we need cred credibility with um with communities and we need to enable communities to take control if it's going to be sustainable so um i've rattled through this there's a lot more in the report this is the some elements about investing to connect um something that hasn't happened historically in the nhs but is a big theme in all our reports coming out this winter and springtime and we've got a number of them um as well as this we need to invest in communities to take a lead for themselves because each community is different there are some ways within this report that can be this can be done these are three kind of headings and there's under each of them there's a set of bullet points with some suggestions so i've just given you a taster of some of the suggestions commissioning for community-based models of healthcare offering match funding to get behind community-led projects for example um and, but actually this project was mostly done before the uh, new reforms were announced and so we think it's really important that it needs to be both possible and encouraged somehow through the new nhs reforms for these new provider collaboratives and place-based partnerships to be able to commission community-based models of healthcare. so that's a key element for us the, 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 the report contains 10 examples of key moments of change we've just i've just put two of them here um, but key moments of change is a phrase that we'd like the nhs to use more because this is this is moments in people's lives that, that change happens and you know dogs actually came up a few times in our workshops as being a great connector as did food and other things like that so look for the connectors um the next slide is another uh, example of a key moment of change you know if, when you value the community when the nhs realizes what the what, the, what the, the community has to offer some of those attributes um then you know that can be a key moment of change for the relationship and for the power shift to happen and the confidence to be built and then slide 13 this is really just to say that um, the Health Creation Alliance, um, we, we did this four years ago, um, a, a version of this in a different way, and we came up with this framework. Um, it's a different way of framing it, it's different words, but it's, it's essentially the same, it's highly complementary with the work that we've done in this, pro in this project. So it will appeal to slightly different people in different roles, but the more ways of framing this, but to tell the truth about what actually works and dig deep, um, the better. So if you've seen what you've, what you, if you like what you've seen, please join us. Um, we've got a, uh, the next slide is uh, is just a bit of information on that, uh, and you can become a, a partner in health creation. Thank you.